Alright, bonjour à tous, bienvenue dans mon monde, et nous sommes dans mon Let's Play, épisode 46. So, welcome to everyone, and let's get started, shall we? As you probably already noticed, I hope you did, otherwise you're probably uh, either blind or have some problem with colors. Or really new to this game, I'm in the nether and I wanted to start this episode by quickly showing you how uh, I've been collecting my nether egg for the last past week and that's simply using TNT and the great thing now that my mob trap, the, my mob trap is completely working is that I can make as much TNT as I want given that I have uh, pretty much an infinite supply of gunpowder and thanks to the cobble blaster and the mining charges I have a lot of sand as well so that's a good way to make a lot of TNT lots of explosions and as you can see uh, went to the nether with a full stack of TNT so using only 18 I have almost a full inventory given that I have a few empty slots, well, not empty, but already occupied by my tools, etc. But um, I'd say that with 20, 25 TNT you can get a complete inventory full of netherrack. You waste a little bit and of course the landscape is gonna look like crap, but besides that, who cares? nether is so big, only made of netherrack, so oh, let's just do that in areas where I won't go to, well, build anything. Let me just finish my diamond pickaxe so that it would break, and I'll try to make the landscape a little bit more flat, uh, by the way. Oh. I thought she was closer than that to breaking. Mm, maybe not. Let's see if it's an infinite pickaxe. As you can see, the way you destroy the Enderac now is completely ridiculous, by the way. With 1.3 now, uh, when you break a block, you instantly break the block behind it. So as you can see with the netherrack, that is the weakest uh, block in the game. Well, with a good pickaxe you can completely annihilate anything made of netherrack by just clicking everywhere. Oh, and there she comes back. Oh, there we go. So yeah, that's a little bit ridiculous, but uh, I'd still rather use the TNT. It's a bit more fun. Okay, so now that that's done we can get to our buildings. Oh, gee, thank you for the falling. So let's get to the building. Today I want to show you a quick farm I've been working on because I've decided that I want to have something that looks like a mushroom biome. And for that I'm gonna need a mycelium farm, which is this room. And uh, we're gonna have a quick look at it. Uh, I built it in uh, a live stream, so if you're interested, uh, spoiler, if you're interested in seeing how I made this room, I'm gonna put a link to the live stream video on Twitch so you can see the whole building process. And now I'm gonna quickly explain to you how that works. So, as you can see, we have some mycelium. The one on the border here are just to allow the mycelium to grow. On the block in the middle we have one block dispenser that's here to place new dirt block and we have piston just uh, well let's remove it over here to push the dirt down we have another one that push the mycelium on this side we have one other under the green wool here that push the mycelium up and then the block dispenser here is the place where I collect the mycelium that is made. So, um, let's see how it works to begin with. Yeah. It causes a little bit of lag because there's no block below 
uh, these plugs so there's some light updates every time they move so which is something I should fix by simply placing some blocks downstairs so as you can see block dispenser places dirt and it move on the side and they are swallowed by the block dispenser here as you can see the mycelium is really quick to spread I already have three over here and one there so let's see how everything works it's fed by a reed clock as usual I love this thing, they allow me to uh, harvest the mycelium farm every 5-10 oh, minutes and they are really simple to make, you just need a block detector a torch on the side, a little bit of dust the block dispenser I'm gonna cut it off so you can see um, when it grows in front of the detector block dispenser swallows it so it destroys the reed in front of it and then it places it back and it, that sends a pulse to a little counter using the block dispenser that will send 10 pulse for each full block inside here each pulse makes the block dispenser switch to the next block until it reaches the torch and the torch will act as a non-conductive block which will stop the counter and allow it to wait for a new start pulse from the block detector here and so all of those pulses they go here and then they go into our piston or our block dispenser so we need to first place some new dirt to the block dispenser that's the signal just here the blue wool that goes to the dirt dispenser places some dirt shortly after it goes uh, all the way up uh, no, right there to the piston that push the dirt down then it goes to this piston that push the dirt on this side shortly after it goes into the green here with a little delay that push the mycelium up and just after that the block dispenser again using the same thing the torch is on the sandstone block here and makes the dispenser swallow the mycelium so pretty straightforward nothing really hard uh, besides getting the timing right to place the block push it on the uh, down, push it then on the side, push it up here and swallow to finish. And since the mycelium is not such a useful block, uh, besides if you want to do well what I want to do, which is making a mycelium uh, mushroom biome, uh, you can use the exact same system but use grass instead. So if you switch the mycelium for some grass, it's gonna work the same way and they spread uh, roughly at the same speed so it should work exactly the same way which is pretty cool because their, uh, the grass is a better block, more useful anyway, now let's move to uh, a quick uh, other build I had to make and that's because my kiln is not working anymore, sadly uh, that's from 1.3 uh, update. I hadn't noticed how bad it was, but recently I tried to cook some urn in here and I lost almost 60% of the urns. I had two stacks in each and I only got like 35 or 40 urns being uh, cooked, so that sucks. And that's because of the way it works. Uh, Yes, there's some piston on each side and it makes the block go away. Give me that, thank you. But now the, east, the items are ghosting. 
they are gusting every now and then and uh, it's causing most of the urns to stay stuck up here so I can't use this kiln sadly anymore but since uh, I really like this room it's one of the first I made in this world I don't want to destroy it to make something new I could uh, change the way it works but uh, I've decided not to since I can easily fit another kiln and that's what I did so I've decided to place it just here because I had a little bit of room that I could use and that's now this room um, sadly I don't have enough any urn I think mm, let's quickly make you some so I can show you um, pum pum pum. no everything's cooked yep so I'm gonna quickly use my old system so now it's a bit uh, stupid because I make the pottery here and I cook them somewhere else but eh, c'est la vie so just give me some yeah some urns if you have any clay inside of course you don't and here well at least that makes it four and uh, let's grab a little bit more clay I should still have enough my last clay rush was uh, at least a few weeks ago but I collected a lot because I wanted to make some buildings with bricks anyway I'm still not liking so far the way Mo Moyang handled the 1.3 SS SMP SSP merge uh, so far it's been really annoying so mm, yeah I don't know I hope they are gonna do something to make it works much better because it seems that so far for people with uh, lower spec computers well uh, it's getting really laggy and they can barely play anymore so hmm. I don't know it is for you guys luckily my computer is not that bad so I can still run the game record with fraps but it's getting um, a bit laggier as you can see 25 20 FPS when I'm recording with fraps and 40 otherwise okay that should be just enough for what we need I'm gonna quickly show you how it works after all that's just a kiln you probably all have oh well way more than one or already built way more than one by now so I'm not gonna spend too much time on it but let's have a quick look so turn on the fire and start with one pulse and what happens is that there's some water flow behind we have the block dispenser that plays the urn one block before the kiln so in the water here then we have a piston which is uh, done in the water flow let's have a look that gets rayed by a sticky piston it pushed the uh, unfired pottery in the kiln and when it's cooked it turns into an item form it falls in here there's a block detector um, just there oops whatever just here that sends a pulse and that pulse makes the whole system place a new horn so with this system you don't need any timer for the cooking the well it's, it's gonna mm, keep cooking stuff until there's nothing left to cook and then that's not gonna make any pulse anymore and when you come back you can just turn off the fire and to collect everything you are asking where are the handy uh, you can go downstairs well you can but you're not supposed to and that's because they're all ending up in a minecart chest and I just press this button and ta -da! I got my minecart chest I take my stuff 
and I send it away. And so let's have a look at that. Pretty simple, all my urns come here into the hopper, goes into the minecart chest, and when I'll call the cart, that's over here, I call the cart, it sends a pulse down to here to activate the, the rail, so it sends the minecart all the way up here and make it fall within my reach, just here. Just this little hole, and it also sends a signal to uh, an RS knowledge, which is made just here, these three blocks. And uh, this knowledge is used to power the gearbox, which powers the hopper. This way, when there's no cart here, the hopper is hand-powered. And when I press the, the remove cart button, just here, it activates a sticky piston, which is somewhere around here. Mm -hmm. I just don't think I can see it without destroying the snow, and I don't have a, a sick touch meta economy, so I can't. But yeah, there's a sticky piston, cards fall on this rail, and ends up falling back into here. And the signal from the cold cart also goes to the knowledge with a huge delay. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight repeaters to allow the minecart to be back here before the gearbox gets powered. This way, there's no urns falling on the rail, they all always go into the minecart. And I don't lose any because I try to be too fast. This is why you need some delay. And this is uh, pretty much it for this kiln. There's nothing really uh, more about it. We can have a quick look at the way. Um, well, the urns are placed. The block detector, which is over there downstairs. Mm -hmm. Here, since it's pulse all the way here, yep, into the same signal as the button I used to start the system, goes into a monostable circuit to send a pulse. That pulse goes into the block dispenser to make it uh, first swallow, but there's nothing to swallow, then place back a new horn or whatever unfired pottery, then it goes to the piston and the sticky piston, so first it's over here, it pushes the regular piston up and it stays extended, thanks to this uh, pulse extender here, and uh, it sends another pulse, a little delayed, so that the piston has time to go up, uh, then it pushes the urn, retracts, the sticky piston retracts, and we are good to go for another cycle. So, nothing very complicated about it. Uh, you can, I'm sure, make something more compact, but uh, I started digging to see how much space I had, because we're really close to this part of my base, yep. uh, the corridor that goes to the breeding farm. So, well, I ended up with more space than I needed, so I used it. Anyway, uh, that's all for today. Uh, we just saw a new kill, maybe gave you some ideas on how to make one of uh, your own, and a mycelium farm that can be turned in a grass farm. And uh, yeah, I think that's a good episode. Should be not too long, not too short. And uh, I'm gonna end this episode on a quick spoiler. If you can uh, guess what kind of farm this is, 
and that's what we are going to talk in the next episode. Anyway, that was Botosai. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I see you next time. Bye bye.